been getting a lot of emails lately um, from people asking what they should get as their first film camera. What I want to do is give you my recommendation, especially if you're coming from a digital SLR or even a mirrorless camera and you want to start shooting film. And you just want to experiment a little bit because that's what it's all about. It's about having fun and trying different things, basically. I know a lot of people would like to jump right into the deep end to get a Leica M6 and a Leica M7. If that's what you want, go for it. But if you just want to experiment and play around with film, then my recommendation would be get something like this, the Nikon F100, which is what I'm going to talk about in a minute, and shoot probably coloured film if you're going to get it developed at a lab. If you're going to develop the film yourself, then get black and white because it's much easier and cheaper. Now, I do this every time on my videos, but down below in the description is a video on how you can develop film in three minutes and also how I take the film out of the canister and I put it into my developing tanks without a darkroom. But that's down below and a lot of people have found that very helpful. Now, let's talk about the Nikon F100. This camera is unmatched by any other camera on the market when this was made. Now, they stopped production of this camera in 2006, um, which is a shame, really, because um, I still think it's one of the best cameras ever made. If they can make a digital camera like this, I'd be very happy. This is what a mirrorless camera should look like, actually. So the F on here obviously stands for film. D on the D500, D5, all those, that sounds for digital. But I'm not sure what the Z stands for. <laughs> You've got the Z7 and Z6 now, and I'm trying to work out what the Z stands for. So if you guys know, let me know down below in the comments, please. It'd be nice to know what the Z or Z, sorry, Z, I have to say, not Z, Z. If you know what that means, let me know in the comments down below. Even though the F100 were cancelled in 2006, you can still pick up a really good condition one now for a good price. Now, this particular camera I have in my hands, I picked up a week ago on Trade Me, and this is an F100 with a 50mm 1.8 lens, came with the camera, and I also got this, which is an MV15 battery grip. Um, so this actually has extra batteries in there, and you can use it for portrait and landscape mode. It came with all this, and I paid 200 New Zealand dollars for it. That's about 135 US dollars for you guys in America. Um, and I don't actually think the owner used it. I can't find a mark on it anywhere. Even the film plate in the back doesn't have any scratches on it. It's in amazing condition. It is literally like brand new. It even has the rubber grommets on the bottom. The battery compartment is not broken. Most of them are broken secondhand. It came with all of its manuals and everything else. Now this is a full autofocus camera. So if you listen, It sounds like a robot having a seizure, basically, but that's a D-series lens. A D-series lens does not have the silent wave motor inside, or basically the focusing motor. The motor on this is down here on the actual, you see down there? It's actually down here. There's an actual little motor inside the camera that controls the autofocus on the lens. And that's why it sounds like a robot having a seizure, basically. The F100 is a semi-pro body, okay? You have to remember that, it's a metal frame. I think it's magnesium alloy, actually. Don't hold me to that, but I think it is. But it's solid, but it's not weather sealed. A lot of people get confused with that. They think it's a full weather sealed body like the F5 and the F6 was. This is not weather sealed. So remember that if you take this out in the rain, it's gonna get damaged. It's not like a lot of the modern Nikon cameras that are full weather sealed. This won't take that type of punishment. So remember that if you buy one, it looks rugged and it is built really well. It's built like a tank, but it is not weather sealed. Now, the great thing about this camera is it runs on regular good old AA batteries. There are no special batteries for this. Like some of the film cameras use a special watch battery. Some of the film cameras from the 60s, I believe, you can't even get batteries from them anymore. They don't manufacture them anymore. But this runs on regular AA batteries, which you can get anywhere. And they last forever in this camera. So that's a nice feature of it. And the compartment door has a rubber grommet. Now don't worry if it doesn't fit properly. None of them fit properly, to be truthful. A few features this camera has that could surprise you. It is a full continuous autofocus camera. It only has five focus points, so okay? Um, I know modern cameras have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably even thousands in a few years, but this only has five focusing points, but they all work and they work really well. To be truthful, I only use a sense of focus point. I lock it on that and I keep it there. Now, another thing about this camera, which always surprised me, it has, I don't know if you can see that, it has an eighth thousandth of a second shutter. Yep, on a film camera. It's great. It's really, really good, especially if you want to get the shallow depth of film, bright sunlight, you can take it right up to 8,000 a second. The viewfinder on this obviously is a prism, so the prism's inside here. Now, this is the same as most digital SLRs. They have a prism, so you look for your viewfinder, it bounces around the prism, comes down, and goes straight for the lens. So you see exactly what you're going to take a photo of. So it's a box, basically, you look through. This probably has one of the best viewfinders 
on any SLR or digital SLR on the market even now. Um, I would compare this probably to a D850 and a D5. It's that good. It's so bright and so clear. It has a information bar at the bottom. So it gives you information about the camera, what the camera's doing at the bottom of the actual viewfinder. And it's also got a round eyepiece, if you see there, and that actual eyepiece comes off which is quite nice because you can add different eyepieces on there. You can still get all the eyepieces for this because this is actually the same um, round eyepiece that's on the D850. So, okay, on the front of the camera, you have a switch which takes you from manual to single to continuous focusing. So that's your focus control switch. And on the other side, you have a depth of field button. Now, obviously you have the legendary Nikon grip, which is still one of the best around, and it has this nice red bit inside there. So on the top, you've got the Nikon switch, which is probably one of the best camera switches around. So it's around the shutter button, in the middle is the shutter button, but the switch is off, on, and you flick it again, and it will actually light up the display at the top as well. Um, the new S1H has this, and the Panasonic G9 has the same switch, which is really good. You have your mode button, and then you have your exposure compensation button. So the modes on this camera are manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, and program. That's it really. Um, most people keep it in aperture priority to be truthful. And obviously you've got exposure compensation on that side. Now on the other side, you have a bracketing button. You have a flash button, which controls the flash settings. And then there's an ISO button and it's a DX ISO as well. So most modern films are DX coded. You put the film in there and the camera knows straight away what ISO is, but you can override it if you want. If you want to shoot slightly different, you can override the ISO and pick a different ISO in the camera. And there's also a dial here, which is for single shot, continuous, continuous slow and timer. Now in continuous, this camera will shoot 4.5 frames a second. Yep, film camera. Your roll of film won't last long. And if you add the battery grip with the batteries inside, it will actually shoot five frames a second. So it boosts it by half a frame. Remember not to get carried away because you only got 36 shots on a roll of film. Obviously you've got the display on top, which gives you all your information, as you can see. It's a really nice display as well. It's a really clean display. My favorite part about any Nikon camera, because I believe Nikons have the best metering system of any camera out there, is the metering switch here. Now to control it, you push the button in and you just flick it around to the meter setting you want. Now it's spot, center weighted and matrix. Now to be truthful, I keep mine 90% of the time in spot metering because I think that works best for me. Um, it's the way I shoot and I, I do like to shoot that way of the spot metering on there, but matrix is I will go to if I want something a little bit different. And then you got your hot shoe on top, which will work with all modern Nikon flashes. Even the SB5000 works on here as well, which is pretty cool. And on the back you have we we'll get to this button in a minute, this CSM button, we we'll get to that in a minute. And you have your back button focus, you have your AEL and your AFL, and you also have a dial up to dial on the back, which is great, especially as you get older, your vision changes, you can change that. And also on the back, you have a focus point selector and a lock, so you can lock it onto the focus point. I've normally got mine on center focusing and I lock it in and that's it. And then obviously you've got your two Nikon dials. That's basically it. The camera is that easy to use. You stick it in aperture priority and away you go. It's full auto focus, you pick your aperture from the dial, the camera takes care of the shutter speed for you, but it's full autofocus and it works really well, especially with the modern G series lenses too. Now this is the manual for the F100. Look how thin that is compared to modern manuals. It's amazing and it teaches you everything in there about the camera. Now what this camera has is a very cool programmable settings in the features. There's 22 different programmable buttons on here or changes you can make to the camera. Now I shoot back button focusing. So I push that button at the back to focus and I use the shutter button just to fire the shutter. I don't use it for focusing. When the camera is new, it's set in its default, which is the shutter button controls focusing and the shutter at the same time, and I don't like that. I'll cover that in another video. So what you do is you push this button here, which is the CSM button. You've got a number four and you go out to 22, but we'll keep it on number four. Now, if I change that back to zero, like that, you see I'm focusing from the front. See? Now, if I change that back to one, it just fires the shutter. And then the focusing is done from the back button focusing. And there's 22 different settings you can do in this and they're all in the manual. So you can customize this as easy as you want, basically. And it works really, really well. Um, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite cameras. This is my second F100. My other, my other one's pretty beat up. But yeah, we won't talk about that. Now loading film in this camera is incredibly easy. Okay, you push the button in on the side here, push that along and it opens the door up. Then you get a roll of 35 mil film. Um, hey, if you guys have any suggestions of some cheap film I can buy, 
that I can destroy when I do this, please let me know. I can't keep wasting really nice rolls of Fuji film. You put it along like that, so it's in there, as easy as that, just leave it like that, close the door, push the button, and it's done. That's it, easy as that. Now, what you will find is that you'll probably get more photos with a 36 roll on this camera, because it doesn't advance the film on so much. I find most of the time I get around about 37 to 38 shots out of a 36 roll. So the camera kind of pays for itself after a while, I guess. If you do continuous, sorry, I'm gonna ruin a film here. That's pretty good for an old camera. 4.5 frames a second. Now, once the roll is finished, it's very easy to rewind it. You push down the bracketing button, which has a little red film symbol on it, and then you hold down the exposure compensation, and next to it has a little film symbol as well. You hold those two down, and you hear it, and it's now rewinding the film. So if you guys want me to do a full review on this camera, take it out, take some shots, and do a slideshow of the photos, leave me a thumbs up down below. I wasn't planning on doing a full review on this camera. Um, this was just to answer some of my subscribers' questions on what's the best film camera to get, which is what I recommend, and this is it, the F100. But if you do want me to do a review, give me a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, um, please leave me a comment down below. I'm always happy to answer them. I try my best to answer all of your questions. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.